So we're in the desert, far away from Bethlehem. And we see that we have a band, a small band of wise men from the east. Let's hear what they have to say. Well, hello, fellow travelers. Welcome to our camp. You caught us at a very busy time. You may have noticed we're breaking camp. We're packing up to leave. We've been traveling for months now, but we are so much closer to reaching our final destination. So you must have heard the good news as well, that the King of Kings has been born in the West, but this King is very special. He's like no other. He's going to be the King of all the nations. We are but humble magi. We've been studying and reading and praying about what the Lord's word for many years, particularly the prophecies of his birth. Don't let my old friend fool you. He's the king of many nations. In fact, we're all of royal blood. But the one, the one that we seek, he will rule over us all. Well, we have a little time. Why don't we tell you? A few more of the prophecies that the Lord has revealed to us over the years. Prophet Isaiah writes, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. The word of the Lord is full of all kinds of prophecies concerning his birth. In Isaiah it also says, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive you and give birth to a baby boy, and they will call him Emmanuel. Do you know what Emmanuel means? God with us, that's right. God with us. There's even word that his family goes clear back to the beginning of time. That's correct. It means that every generation before him comes from the line of King David, King Solomon, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even back to the very first man that God created, Adam. In the scroll, in the one called the Numbers, it says, there will be a star. It reads, it reads, a star shall come forth from Jacob, and a scepter shall rise from Israel. Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but that is the star we've been following for months now. And the prophecies even tell us that kings will bring him gifts. Yes, it does. But what kind of gift could you give to a king? Well, after a lot of thought and prayer, I've decided that I'm going to give him gold. Gold is a symbol of his kingship and lord of lords. And I will bring him frankincense as a symbol of his deity as our creator. Myrrh for his humanity for us all. Well, we have come far, and we have far to go. But our journey will not be complete until we actually see the newborn king. Oh, man, that, that reminds me. Hey, we're running late. We got many miles to go. You're right, many miles to go. I want to thank you for coming tonight. And as you travel on your journey, consider what gift you would bring to the mighty God. The wonderful the counselor, the everlasting father, the prince, the prince of peace. peace. Based on this one. Oh, 
maybe just a little bit. Well, at least they're slow. They're like really low even y'all. It's okay if you'll just try to come around, and some can even come around. Just get as close as you can so you can hear. We are now in the fields with the lowly shepherds. They stay out all night to protect their sheep, and they're watching over them to keep them from danger. Real good, though. They sit night after night in front of that campfire. But something really special happened last night. Hey, there's more people to tell our story to. Listen yeah. to what happened to us. Yeah, listen to what happened to me or us last night. It was us. It was a night I will never forget. There we were in our field like we always are every night. Chickens were roosting. The sheep were all laying down, fixing to go to bed. We were just about to put the fire out. And all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, the sun just appeared out of the sky. It was just so bright that I had to cover my eyes because I couldn't even see. Then I realized that wasn't the sun at all. It was an angel. I was going to tell him that. But yes, <laughs> it was an angel. It even came and spoke to us. His voice was like thunder. I can assure you, we were scared, slapped to death. He was huge, and he had this booming voice, and it was scary. Best believe it was. But then he told us, fear not, for I bring great news. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Yeah, he told us that we'd find this baby just wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a feeding manger. But then the sky exploded again. Angels filled the sky. There were millions from one side all the way to the other. As far as your eye could see, not an inch of space that there wasn't an angel singing and praising God. That's right. They were all of them. Every single one was praising and singing God, saying glory to God in the highest. And, and on earth, peace and goodwill towards man. man. Yeah. And then poof, they were gone. We sat there for a few minutes and then we said, you know what? We don't even know where we're going. We don't know how to get there, but we got to see if what he said was true. So we left. We left the sheep. We left the fire going. We left everything. We, I don't know how we even did it, but we just did. We just knew we had to find out about what the angel had told us. of. But you know what? We did find them. We found both Joseph and Mary. Ah, uh, yeah. And in the back of the room, we had to look through goats and sheeps and horses. Horses. There he was in the very back in a manger with hay everywhere. It was a beautiful, brand new baby. Boy. Yes. It yes. Was, it was the exact one that the angels had told us about. He was. Mm hmm. And we just stood there for what seemed like hours just watching a mother with her baby. And then much to our surprise, she wanted to talk to us. Talk to us. Can you believe it? She wants to know everything about us. People say we stink. <laughs> but she had this smile on her face as we talked to her and told her about angels. And we were scared at first. And she's like, she has this smile on her face and she's kind of nodding like maybe an angel had talked to her. Did she have that look yeah, like she, she knew what we were talking about? That smile of hers, I will never forget. Mm -hmm. That is for sure. So, do you know what was so amazing? And do you know why we were just so surprised that Mary wanted to talk to us? It's because we're just some lowly, stinky shepherds. You know what that means? We were just, we're the lowest of the lowest people. Nobody has anything to do with us. Not even the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we were blown away by what we saw. We told everybody what had happened and what had changed us. And we expected them to just think, oh, Here's some crazy people. 
coming to be crazy and all that. But much to our surprise, they were just so astonished. And they were just so amazed at what we said. They believed every single word that we had told them that night, didn't they? How could they not? We're in the fields, just like every night. And this angel comes and tells us to go into this town and we're going to find this little baby boy. Yeah, right. Yeah. How is that going to happen? That's but right. we did. That's right. And don't forget Joseph and Mary. You can never forget about Joseph and Mary. But man, what a night. That, that was a serious night. <clears throat> we were able to find the Messiah through our journey. Now I hope that you're able to find him in your life through this journey. Now go, continue your search for the Messiah. Hello, travelers. I bet you're on your way to Jerusalem as well. Jerusalem for the Feast of the Passover. That's where we're all going. Uh, we rented a room here to, to rest a bit because we, uh, we're a bit old. And uh, I'm betting that some of these children just might be a little bit weary of standing. And I bet some of you would like to sit down inside our tent on our rug. You're welcome to come in and sit down on the rug right there. And there may be some of the others of you that are a bit weary too. And uh, I have three luxury seats right here. So anyone that needs them, you may uh, sit there as well. Let me introduce myself. I'm Zechariah. And this is my wife, Elizabeth. And this is my son, our son, John. Yes, you heard me right. This is our son, John, not our grandson. Oh, Zachariah, must you tell everyone who passes by the story? Why should I not? Isn't it a wonderful thing that God did for us <laughs> in giving us a son? in our late age. Don't you want to hear that story? Okay, okay. God did do that. Bless be his name. Go ahead. Well, I was a priest in the days of King Herod, and I had been given the task to go into the, uh, to, to go into the temple to offer the sacrifices. Now, Elizabeth and I, had loved God with all of our heart, and we had kept his commandments. But God had still not given us the desire of our heart, a son, a child. And so um, Elizabeth was not able to have child. I was pretty old already, and Elizabeth was, uh, uh, Elizabeth was <laughs> advanced in years also. And so I was chosen to go into the temple to burn the incense. And as I entered, an angel of the Lord appeared to me. Guess what I was? I was scared to death. I was terrified. But the angel said to me, do not be afraid for God has heard your cry and answered your prayer. And your wife, is going to give you a son and you must call his name John. He will be great, the angel said before the Lord, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb even. And he will turn many to the Lord and he will go before the Lord in power and in the spirit. And he will make ready for the Lord a people that will be prepared to receive the Lord. So when I heard that, laughing is, is just a mild description of what I did. And I said, oh, how can this be? But the angel Gabriel said to me, you will be silenced until this comes to pass. The house was so quiet. It was wonderful. <laughs> While I was pregnant, my cousin Mary came to visit and stay with us. I was so excited because she was having a baby as well. When I heard her arrive, my baby leaped in my womb and I felt overcome by the Holy Spirit. And as she was coming toward me, 
I called out, blessed are you among women and your child will be blessed also. And I hugged Mary and said, what a wonderful thing it was that she was visiting me. I said, but how can this be that the mother of my Lord would come to me? Yeah. And I spoke to her and said, for you see, when I heard the sound of your, of your greeting reach my ears, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that the Lord would fulfill what he told her. We had a wonderful visit and she stayed for a while, but soon the time came for me to give birth and I had my baby boy. We had waited so long and we're so excited to have our son finally. Well, the time came to announce his name and all of our relatives and friends, they were coming to me and saying, of course, you have waited so long for this son and it's our custom. You will name your boy after, your fa after his father. And I said, no, his name must be John. They argued with me and they didn't understand why I insisted upon this. So I said to them, go ask Zechariah. Well, Zechariah was silenced, remember? Mm -hmm. So he motioned for somebody to give him something with which to write. And I wrote, his name is John. And at that moment, my mouth was opened by the Lord and I was able to praise God that he had fulfilled his promise that he was going to give to us a son. And then God allowed me to prophesy over my son and God told me that he would be called a prophet of the Most High and he would go before the Lord to prepare the way to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. As you can see, our boy is growing strong. He's growing tall and he's growing in the spirit. And we are excited to see what the Lord will do with our John. We are, but I just wish he'd wear something other than camel hair and eat normal food not locust and honey. Yum. <laughs> well, that's my boy. Locust and honey, camel hair kind of boy. Well, I think it's probably time for us to get to Jerusalem. You know, you want to thank you for stopping and hearing our story here tonight. Well, we're going to come behind you. We're a little bit slower. Our son John's going to help us. But I have heard that Elizabeth's cousin Mary and her family are going to be in Jerusalem too at the feast of the Passover. Yes, Mary, Joseph, and that wonderful boy who made John leap in my womb, Jesus, will be there. Safe travels, go in peace. Shalom. Ah, shalom, shalom. So welcome to the festival of the Passover. The festival is a special time when the Jewish people celebrate God freeing the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. We are standing near the entrance to the Jewish temple. And although the Passover was a few days ago, um, it looks like... Jesus! Je Jesus! No! Oh, uh, 12 years old, he's got this high brown hair. Have you seen him? Oh, please, have you seen him? Anyone, surely, so how about you? Have you seen him? Please, someone help me. Please, 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 help, help, help. Sir, you need to calm down, sir. His son went missing? He's got to be around here somewhere. No, 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 you don't understand. He's not. I've looked everywhere. Oh, if I don't find him, my wife's gonna... Oh, listen, never mind. Listen, my name is Joseph. I'm his father. Well, not really his father, but yeah, I'm his father. Anyway, listen, if you see him, please just let me know. Again, his name is Jesus. Brown hair, 12 years old, about this high. Gotta find him. Before I forget, if you see a lovely lady around here walking around with her hair on fire asking about him, you didn't see me. <laughs> what was that? I do feel bad for him, though. I have these two of my own, and I didn't know what I would do if one of them ever went missing. Uh, Shalom. Shalom. Please excuse me, but my son seems to be missing. Have you seen about a 12-year-old boy wandering around without his parents? No, I'm sorry. I haven't. Oh, well, thank you. You see, his father was supposed to keep an eye on him during our caravan back home. And although I know he'll be fine, I'm still worried about him, and I know we need to find him. Can you please let him know if you see him? Oh, and by the way, his name is Jesus. I'm Mary. I'm his mother. If you happen to see him, please let him know we're looking for him. Of course. Shalom. Shalom. Uh, Mary. Hi. So you haven't found him yet either? 
Uh, no. He must get this from your side of the family, right? That's my husband's attempt at humor. You see, before we were married, an angel appeared to me. He called me favored one, and he said that the Lord was with me. He said I would have a son, and his name would be called Jesus. He'd be called Son of the Most High. And I didn't understand what this meant. I, I remember him even saying that my cousin Elizabeth, who'd been without child for many years, would have a child of her own. When I went to visit her, the baby in her womb leaped for joy. An angel came to me, too. He came to me in a dream, and I know it was real. It wasn't just some bad grapes or something. He told me not to fear, for the child was going to be from God, and that one day he would save the sins of his people. Some time later, Caesar Augustus sent out a census, so me and Mary packed up our things, and we headed to Bethlehem, because that's where my family's from. When we got there, the town was so crowded, there was no room for us in the inn, so we had to stay at a stable. But it was time for our baby to be born. What a glorious day the day that our son was born. I remember swaddling him in cloth and laying him in a manger, when suddenly we heard a noise outside. It was shepherds. They had come saying that angels had told them about our son's birth. I was so confused, I didn't understand what was going on, and they were praising and glorifying God. And then a couple of days later, a man named Simon and a woman named Anna began praising God in the temple, saying that the Messiah had been born. Then some time later, some other men in real fancy clothes came by with gifts for our child. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They worshipped our child. The child that we forgot about, that we're looking for, gotta find him. I just can't believe what we've been hearing about for the past few days. How can a little boy know the law like he does? It's just amazing. When he speaks about the word of God, it's almost hot. Mm -hmm. And... And when he reads from the scroll, it's like he hardly even looks. Yeah. He seems to know it. And every question we throw at him, time and time again, he seems to answer every one of those questions. <laughs> How? I really don't know what to say about this. He's so well learned for being so young. His father must be proud. Um, excuse me, sirs. I just couldn't help but overhear. This young boy you speak of, mm -hmm. he wouldn't happen to be around... 12 years old, have brown hair, and he's about this tall. Well, there is a boy that fits that description, but he's been with us for what, like three days now? Yeah. Does his name happen to be, ooh, what was it again? Jesus. Jesus, yes. Actually, he's in the tabernacle court this very moment teaching the priest. <laughs> I'm sorry. What my brother meant to say was he is in the tabernacle court being taught oh. by us yeah. religious Pharisees. Yes, that's right. He's being taught by some of the most highly educated mm. priests in all of Israel. Mm. Still yep. yet, you have to admit, he was talking about some pretty sophisticated stuff back there. The holiness of God, the value of worship, the total sovereignty of El Shaddai. Let me put it this way. Have you guys ever heard of Socrates, Aristotle, Plato? <laughs> Fools! All have camel brains compared to this kid. <laughs> oh, my brother, I think you might be getting a little oh. sick here. Oh. You have a fever, I think. Really? Oh, why don't we depart oh. now? Come, oh. come with me. Joseph, Very really, well. are you what is hearing it? us? What is it? I just heard from this priest. He must be in there. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Oh, I sure hope they find Jesus. I couldn't even imagine losing a child. <gasps> Lorelai? Alea? Oh no! <laughs> he continued to increase in wisdom and stature. He began his ministry and he was teaching and preaching and choosing his disciples and loving sinners. And this is what angered some of the Jewish leaders. They did not like that he loved them and he forgave them. Shalom, everyone. I am Matt. A disciple of Jesus Christ. But before that, I was a tax collector. And man, did people hate me! I mean, I was just doing my job. But, well, people often didn't like tax collectors because we often took more than we needed to. You see, we lined our pockets by charging people more than they owed. And to the king, we gave what he wanted. That all changed when I met Jesus. You see, I was minding my own business, sitting in my booth, collecting taxes of tax. Tax collectors too, right? But Jesus walked up to me and he said, 
follow me. And I had heard of his authority and his teachings before. And I felt like there was nothing I could do except get up and follow him. So I did. And then I even invited him to my house for supper that night, along with many other tax collectors. And then the Pharisees were all like, well, why did this Jesus fellow eat with all these Pharisees? I mean, it was with all these tax collectors and sinners. But Jesus responded, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repent. And that is when I realized he was talking about me. I was the sinner that needed to repent. I'd always felt like an outcast because of my job as a tax collector and my sin of greed. But when Jesus called me and I got up and followed him, it changed me and I became forgiven. I even became one of his 12 disciples. You know, with all the things that I've seen, maybe I should write about them. And then I can tell everyone of all the amazing things that Jesus has done. Well, I'll tell you what, if you write about your story, I hope you can write about mine too, or maybe somebody can, you know, uh, maybe, what's that doctor's name? Uh, the Luke. Oh. Luke. Luke. Yeah, Luke, he could write about it. Well, hello all, I'm Zacchaeus. As you can tell, I'm, I'm a wee little man. And a wee little man am I. Well, you see, I too was a tax collector, but I wasn't just any tax collector, you know. I was, I was the big man of Jamba. The big man in town, you know, the big chief. <laughs> but, but you know, I still did some bad things, and I, I wanted to see who this Jesus was. You know, they heard about he was doing miracles and healing people and doing stuff, and I wanted to see for myself. So I knew one day he'd walk over here, but as, as I already said, I'm kind of a wee little man. I, I couldn't see over the big crowd. The problem is, uh, so, I, you know, I decided to climb this tree, and when I got up there, Jesus walked right by me, and he, he looked at me, and he said, was that kiss? You know, he kind of sang it a little bit. He was like, you come down for I'm going to your house today. And so I came down. We went and had some dinner. But, you know, he got a lot of dirty looks for uh, hanging out with a guy like me. But, you know, I was so overcome with, with the love that Jesus showed me. I told him, I said, Jesus, I for, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry for all I've done. And would you forgive me? And, you know, I said, I'll, I'll give back half of what I've taken and, and four times of the stuff I've cheated from people to the poor. You know, and he said, you know, salvation has come to this house today. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. You know, Jesus saved me that day. My life has been changed and, and I'll never be the same. I too was forgiven. I followed Jesus into the house of the Pharisees where he ate. I was overcome by his teachings. I had a bottle of perfume with me. So I knelt down at his feet and I began to weep. I had nothing else with me, so I started to wash his feet with my hair. The Pharisees judged me, so Jesus began to tell a story. He said there were two men. They were lent 500 denarii and 50 denarii. The lender forgave their debt because they couldn't pay it back. So Jesus asked the Pharisees, which debtor loved the lender more? The Pharisee said, obviously the one who owed him 500 denarii. So Jesus looked down at me and he told the Pharisees, he says, she wept and washed my feet and anointed my feet. You guys could not even provide water for my feet and you didn't anoint my head. So this woman, she has many sins and she's been forgiven. You've been forgiven too. Your faith has saved you. Now go in peace. Now, I don't know why Jesus forgave me, but I do know that I'm loved and that that saved my life. I too have been forgiven. I was an outcast, so much so that I couldn't even go with the other women to the well. So today I was at Jacob's well just like any other day, and I saw a man sitting there. He asked me for a drink, and I was taken aback because he was clearly a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan, and Jews don't associate with Samaritans because of our ancestry. He said, if you knew who was asking you for a drink, you would ask him for living water. I was so confused. This man didn't even have a jar to put his water in. So I asked, where does this living water come from? He said, anyone who drank from this would thirst again. But anyone who drank the living water would never thirst again. So I asked for this water so I wouldn't thirst again and I wouldn't have to come to this well again. So he told me to go get my husband. And immediately shame just washed over me as I told him I didn't have a husband. 
and he said he knew, and he knew every decision I had ever made. I was awestruck at this prophet, and then he revealed he was so much more. He was the Messiah, the Christ foretold to bring his salvation. I had to tell everyone. I ran to tell the good news. I even left my water jar. I was just so overcome with this need to tell everyone. The Messiah came and met me where I was, and he forgave me, and I will never be the same. Shalom. Be safe on your journey. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. <laughs> So why are you all lined up here? Jesus just came through. We brought our palm branches to greet him. He came in riding a donkey, just like the prophet said he would. We all cried, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You know, your leaders, your high priest, they arrested Jesus and they brought him here to me. I tried him, found no fault in the man. And yet, here we are, Passover, and it's your custom that I release somebody back to you, prisoner. So tell me. Who shall I release? Jesus, King of the Jews, or Barabbas the murderer? Give us Barabbas! What do you want me to do with Jesus? Crucify! For what crime? I find him innocent. Crucify! Very well. But his death, his death is on your hands. I wash my hands of it. Guards. Claim to the shepherd. The baby that was laid. The baby. The one John for I know the people who do it. He taught at the temple. The one who redeemed and loved sinners. He was arrested and brought before Pilate, and then he was nailed to a cross sinless and he was nailed there for all of us the bible tells us that jesus was the second children who died to give you and me salvation he was laid in a tomb and a huge stone was rolled in blood front so no one could come in and take the body and there was a guard outside <coughs> to guard and make sure this did not happen he was laid in a new tomb. The cross is central to the story of Christmas because dying on the cross is the reason that Jesus was born. We stand here to reflect on what happened as a call. Jesus took the punishment we deserve for our sin. I want us to just take a, mo a second to think about that, what he did for us on the cross. At the cross, it's not the end. It's not the end of the story. Let's go see the two. Gentlemen, I don't see any guards in it. Roll to the side. What is going on? What are you doing here? Have you come to see our Lord? He's not in there. I don't know where he is, but the angel. Hold on, let me restart. My name is Mary Magdalene, and this morning I came to the tomb, and when I got here, the stone had been rolled away. I was so frightened, I ran back to Simon Peter and John and told them, they have taken our Lord's body, and I don't know where they have taken him. So immediately they came running to the tomb. John got here first, and then Peter. They went directly inside, and when they got was went in there, they found that Jesus' body was gone. The only thing left 
was his garment that his body had been wrapped in, laying there on the tomb. The other disciples came too. They went straight in and they also saw that Jesus' body was not there. They talked for a few minutes, but then they went home, leaving me here all by myself. I know they're still scared of the Roman guards finding them. So just now, I was standing right here, weeping, when I looked back at the tomb, and I saw two angels dressed in white, sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the feet. One of them came and asked me, woman, why are you weeping? And I said to them, because they have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they have taken him. I just, I don't. They crucified him, and then I came him, and I just don't know what to do. Woman, why are you weeping? Who do you see? Please, sir, if you have taken his body, tell me where you have laid him, so that I may go take him. Mary. Rag and I? Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go and tell my brethren when I said to my father, and to their father, and to my God, and to their God. Go and tell them. I will, I will tell them I have seen my Lord. 